All right. These are a plate of beef short ribs. The sixth, seventh, and eighth bone is their traditional call. They're the three bone. Uh, we're going to do it a simple seasoning. Uh, some people use mustard as a binder. Just depends on how you feel. I like to use a vegetable oil, canola oil combination. It's Pam. Works just as fine. Probably because I'm lazy. Uh, don't forget the sides. And we're going to do a simple seasoning. It's just going to be some salt, uh, some 16 mesh black pepper, and one of my favorite barbecue seasonings. So, don't worry about like the salt, putting too much, because beef can actually take a lot of salt. That doesn't mean go crazy with it, but you don't have to be super light on it. If you're, especially if you're just using salt and pepper. If you're gonna do like I'm gonna do and put another uh, seasoning on top of it that might have a lot of salt in it, kinda watch how much salt you put on it. Again, don't forget your sides. If you forget your sides, Bradley will come and hunt you in your sleep. Bradley has his own channel. It's called Chud's Barbecue. Check it out. And now we got salt and pepper in. I'm gonna come back over it with one of my favorite barbecue rugs, uh, Killer Hogs D Barbecue Rug. I love it. Don't get sides. Now, if you notice, I did not flip it over. On the beef plate rib, on the back side, the membrane, where a lot of people on pork ribs, like spare ribs and loin backs, they'll pull their membrane. Do not pull the membrane on the beef rib. You need it. You, you really need it. Uh, you need it to hold the bones together. Can you season it? That's subjective. Some people do. Most people don't, actually. I don't. Because it's the, the fat is so thick, you, you can't eat it. It's just there, to, and it doesn't render, so it's, it's just there to hold the bones together so they won't fall apart while you're cooking. So, my opinion, I don't season the back. You, you're just wasting your rub. So, just the top and the sides. We're gonna let this sweat, and we're gonna go outside, and we're gonna get the pit rolling. All right, this is my old country barbecue pits gravity smoker uh it's a beast i haven't did i haven't really did any mods to it other than the casters down here it came with uh it came with like little steel casters that are hard to roll and i bought those polyurethane with ball bearings i think i got them off of amazon for 30 40 bucks other than that, it didn't come with a uh, with a thermometer, so I put the tail true on. Uh, some people say a six inch is better. Uh, I think it posts too far into the chamber. Yeah, I, I got a yeah, it's a four or five inch, but it's 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 pretty accurate. It's a tail true. Uh, also, I got my Thermoworks signals. Uh, I like to call it the pit controller. I use that and attached to that over here is the the billows fan Just attached to the ball joint make sure the ball joint is in the open position the valve uh, I've used it a few times without the fan and I will tell you it's a lot once you dial it in it will roll 
it's just getting it up to temp and getting it dialed in and learning where you have to adjust your vial for the airflow to keep certain temp. But once you get it dialed in, it's magic. But when you put the fan on, uh, you don't have to worry about that. Just set it and forget it. Almost like a pat, almost like a pellet grill. Uh, also, it does. Uh, when you use the fan, it, it helps bring the temp, it brings the temp up fast to what it's supposed to be at. So I like the fan. Uh, the signals alone will not power the fan. The battery is not strong enough. So as you can see, it's got this, this is the power supply and it's got a splitter. One goes to your power and one goes to your fan. The fan is USB-C. Uh, the power is, uh, it's it's USB or you can buy a plug to plug it into the wall. I typically, if I know it's not going to rain, I plug it into the wall. If it looks like it's going to rain, uh, I plug it into the battery pack because you never know. Power will go out, blah, 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 blah. And when I bought this, I intentionally planned on taking it to competition sometime. And even though we have a generator, it's still just, it's just good to have a backup. So this is the battery backup. And I got that from Thermoworks as well. Uh, this is the chute. Let's see if you can see down in there. This is where your charcoal goes. You see the little grate down there. I don't know if you can see, I already got my, my fire starters in there. Uh, it'll hold a 20 pound load of charcoal. I think they said it'll burn 10 to 12 hours. I've actually got 15, 14 hours off a 20 pound load, depending on the conditions outside, I guess, and how hot you're cooking. I normally let this one roll at about 250. Uh, it's insulated. So over here you can touch, uh, I mean, you can actually just lay on it over here, but over here at the chimney side, you can touch it, but I wouldn't recommend leaving your hand there. <laughs> I just wouldn't. Oh, the only other little mod I got was this little uh, magnetic magnetic tool ha hanger. So, because I didn't want this to just be drooping down because eventually you'll get some kind of short. So I was trying to eliminate that problem. That's about all the mods I've done on it. Uh, on the inside is three shelves. Uh, this is also a part of the, the thermal works. It, that's how the fan operates, gets the temp on the inside, tells you what the great temp is. Whatever you set your temp for, that's the sensor. Uh, heat tray down there. I'll actually put a, a aluminum pan right there and put a little water in it. But it's, it's really not for a water pan with me. It's more for catching the drippings so it won't be a mess to clean up. I found out <laughs> after I cleaned it once or twice that nah, this, I can't do this every time. So I put the aluminum pan down there, put a little water in it, catch the drippings. It makes cleanup a lot, lot easier. So we're gonna fire this thing up. Uh, I got my chimney. I already got, got it filled with charcoal. Uh, I'm not going to start it like that. You can start it like that, but then you have to pick it up and dump it in the chute. And you can, I did that like twice. And once I got a, I didn't get burned bad, but it don't take much for me to get burned and for me to learn, uh-uh, we're not doing that. We're gonna do it a different way. <laughs> so uh, instead of lighting it like that, I just measure my charcoal in the chimney and pick it up and dump it in unlit, right? So then I'm gonna go behind it and I'm gonna get uh, uh, my little lighter. You don't have to have a, a big torch or anything and light the fire starters. I'm using tumbleweeds and leave everything open and it takes about 20 minutes, just like it would in a chimney. I mean, it's just a bigger chimney the way that you're doing it. But uh, if you want to light it from the chimney and dump it in, that's fine too. 
but I would suggest not only gloves and a long sleeve shirt, get you a uh, get you a good good pair of safety goggles because the ash once you dump it in, the ash is going to come back up and it's going to go everywhere and you, you don't want to get burned. You don't want it in your eyes or anywhere on your face. So that's how come I do it like that. I'd rather you just use a fire starter at the bottom of tumbleweed or something like that because the great actually has on uh, this one. The first models they didn't, but when I bought mine, it's already got a little place that you can just stick the tumbleweeds in. So yeah, if you're going to light it from your chimney and dump it in, get you some gloves and good goggles so you so the ash won't burn you. So, you know, let's let's fire it up and I'ma show you what it'll do. I don't know if you can see. But that's, that's pretty much all you have to do to light it. And she's smoking now. So in about 20 minutes, I can shut the door and I'm gonna turn the thermal works on. There's no sense in turning it on now just having the fan blowing until it gets hot. Now, once she starts uh, in about 20 minutes and the ambers are glowing and white and all of that good stuff, she can't see down in there now. What I'm going to do is I found out that it's two ways you can do it. They say you can take your wood chunks and put them right down here. And I, I've learned that a split will do good right there. And it's going, it is going to catch. It works. But here's the backside of that. Do you really want to have to come out every hour or so? and open the door up and deal with ash because it's, it's going to build ash. And if you notice, I got a little ash pan right there that I, <laughs> I need to empty. But do you really want to come out and, and every hour have to add a split and deal with the ashes coming out and falling everywhere? I don't. So what I do is when I first put like a brisket on or these ribs or pork butt, what I will do is I'll wait until I put it on in about 30 minutes to an hour after I put it on, I'll put a split in, right? And that's it, I'm not opening that door no more. Now, when I put the charcoal in the uh, in the chute, and I'll, I'll show you what I do, but I'm gonna tell you first. I'll put a little charcoal in, and then I'll come behind with some uh, wood chunks whatever flavor well whichever variety of wood you want to use hickory apple cherry just do what you want but i layer it charcoal a little charcoal then some wood chunks charcoal wood chunk all the way to the top that way it's a constant burn uh the wood catches and and i've actually sat out and watched the smoke come out of the stack and you can smell the hickory. So it actually works. And especially if you're lazy and you don't want to do that, or if you want to put a brisket on at night or a whole shoulder and you know it's going to take one of them 10, 12 hour cooks and you don't want to be out trying to add wood to get your smoke flavor, layer chunks with the charcoal, it works. And uh, yeah, so once she gets up and starts flaming here in about 20 minutes, I'll come back and we'll do that. All right, we are back and 250. The fan has stopped its pause. And you can see the difference uh, in temp. There's, the tail true is reading about ah, 230, 240. It might be a 10 degree difference, but you got to look at where the sensors are placed too also. And this side, your right side, it does get tend to be a little hotter on this side, but not much. So I never put the, the sensor to operate the fan on this side. I kind of try to put it to this, to the left side or not all the way to the left side, but somewhere between 
my tail true in the center and uh yeah that's that's it so i'm gonna open it up and we're gonna put these beef ribs on this plate when the smoke came out here we go i play the beef ribs set them right there i'm gonna shut it up and I probably won't open it for three, maybe four hours to check on it. Uh, after that, I'll open it up and look at it and see how it's doing. Then I'll put a probe in uh, because, I mean, why not? It just helps in case you forget because you can be cooking and forget because it takes about six to eight hours for them to cook. So I put a probe in in about three or four hours. I probably won't spritz. We'll talk about spritzing later. You don't always have to spritz. It just, when you open it up and look and it doesn't look dried out, you really don't have to spritz. Um, if you're cooking hot, too hot, and you're drying it out fast, you'll probably want to spritz then. But normally, I, I rarely spritz, even briskets. Once I once I lay them on there and close the door, that's it. Uh, it's personal preference, though. We'll check back in a couple of hours. Here we go. They are at 185. Let's shut that up. Let's open it up and see what we got. A lot of smoke. <clears throat> I got some more stuff on. I got some some spare ribs that I gotta cook for somebody else. So they looking pretty good. Uh, here go the beef ribs. Remember we talked about spritzing. Or I said I was gonna talk about spritzing. I have not spritzed these. The only time I even opened the door was to, to put the probes in. As you can see, it's plenty moist plenty more so I'm not doing no spritzing those are two pork butts I got going for somebody else too so I'm gonna take the take the ribs off and wrap them and put them back on all right timers going off ribs have reached their internal temp of 185 so let's check it out Okay, let's talk about spritzing. Do you have to spritz? Is it necessary? Not all the time. Sometimes it is. Most times it's not. Uh, some people talking about they spritz every 45 minutes. They spritz every hour. Looking ain't cooking. Man, you wasting heat, letting heat out. You lifting the lid up. Your pit got to catch back up and... It don't take all that. You seen when I opened the door on those ribs, they did, I hadn't spritzed them. They did not need spritzing. And they've been on since this morning. They've been rolling for about six hours now. So, nah, you don't always have to spritz. Sometimes you do. Uh, all meat is different. It, it, it could be choice or prime or wagyu. Uh, and it's, it's all meat is different. So even with a prime, sometimes it might not put out as much fat or render as much fat while you're cooking or you could be cooking too hot. Uh, you know, just, it depends. But normally when I cook on that gravity cooker, I never spritz, never. So spritzing is subjective. Uh, when I do spritz, what do I spritz with? <laughs> Anything that I make up, sometimes there's water. I've did beer and water. I've did beer water and apple cider vinegar. I've even put maple syrup in the spritz. It's just, it's just what you want, you know? But the older I get, the lazier I get in the straight water. That's if I spritz. If I can keep the temps right, you need to spritz, but I'm not telling you, you don't have to. If you want to spritz, spritz. 
but you don't always have to. Uh, next step, I got them wrapped and back on the grill. I got the thermal thermal pro set for 200 degrees. So at about 200 degrees, when the alarm goes off, I start poking around with my uh, with my Insta Read pen and see what kind of pool I get. And if they feel good at 200, I'm gonna take them off. If not, I let them go up to about 203 and start poking around again. Whenever they start to feel good with the Insta Read pen is when I'll take them off. But we're gonna start poking around at 200. Once I take them off, uh, with beef ribs, I don't hold them for a long time or rest them for a long time like I would a brisket. I rest them maybe an hour, hour and a half at room temp and we're gonna eat them. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's all we got left. We're waiting on them to come up the temp, sitting out watching the derby and listening to everybody long. I'm glad I don't have to cut grass no more. Anyway, I'll be back when the ribs are ready to come off once they've rested and we're going to cut them open and see what we got. Okay, the uh, beef short ribs are done. Taking them off, unwrapped them. This is what they look like. Let's cut and tune and see how they turned out. They actually cooked right at eight hours, a little under eight hours, maybe like seven and a half, I want to say. So that's what they look like. No, I am not going to squeeze it because you don't want to get rid of all that good juice. So it's two ways you can eat them. You can eat it straight off the bone, or you can slice it off and make small cuts. I do a little bit of both. It's got a nice smoke ring too, look at that. Real nice smoke ring, not bad. Coming off a gravity smoker, but it's, it's a trick to that too. It's not the smoker per se, more so than it's a chemical reaction. So, see if my assistant, does you wanna try it first? What you think? That's good. It's very good. It's Ridiculous tender. Nice and smoky. If you ever have a chance, get you some beef ribs. Get the plate. Not the loins, but get the plate if you can find them. You might have to go to your butcher shop to find them. Well, if you can't get the three bone or the six, seven, eight bone, you can get a plate of what they call beef chuck ribs. They have four bones. Sometimes they're a little smaller. It just depends on your butcher. But if you can get them, try them. Easy to cook. Very easy to cook. And they're worth it. They're worth the eight hour wait. So, until next time, happy barbecuing. <laughs>